out too, and it's on the right side. And there's billboard. Bill Barley, the province of BC does not go wrong. They know how to do it proper. Oh, there's tons here. <laughs> Alrighty, first break. Alrighty guys, Sasquatch for you here. So we're at the Brilliant Dam, which is one of the five dams in the West Kootenai Power and Light dam complex that generates power. So this is one of the dams. This is the first of five. They got the spillway there. You see that's the powerhouse there. Their head gates, so they can see how much water they get. The substation for the power, you can see, they're making power there. They got the transformers and then they're sending it up the mountain. And you've got all the power line infrastructure. The spillway down there. Oh, on that side, see the spillway? And then we got the tail race right there, where the water's coming out. Comes down through the draft tube and out the tail race, which is right there. The draft tube is the vertical section of the pipe below the scroll case that drops down. And then it comes out this end. But you can see, that's the powerhouse. It leads pretty good, old looking architecture too, man. It looks nice, I like it. But then you got the transformer station, head gates for metering flow. The water comes in in this section, but this is the Brilliant Dam. It's one of a series of five dams. Facility Facts, constructed in 1999 to 2002. 27 million, two Kaplan turbines. Brilliant Dam. The facility's capacity is 125 megawatts, enough to power 5,500 homes. The facility was constructed in 2003 to 2007 project cost was 205 million it has one kaplan turbine employed over 4400 people brilliant generating station is the second powerhouse located immediately downstream of the brilliant dam on the kootenai river which generates power from the water that would otherwise be spilled over the brilliant dam it produces low impact renewable electricity that is canadian eco logo certified meaning that it's strict environment standards its entire life cycle columbia power corporation and columbia basin trust share equal ownership in four generating stations in the Columbia Basin. The Arrow Lakes Generating Station, the Brilliant Dam and Generating Station, Brilliant Expansion Generating Station, and Juanita Expansion Station. Developed and constructed over two decades, these hydropower facilities generated hundreds of jobs, injected millions of dollars into the communities of the West Kootenai. They continue to provide the trust with a sustained source of revenues to support lives of people in the basin. The Brilliant Dam, located on the Kootenai River near Castlegar, was constructed during World War II when lead and zinc were in high demand and all other generators on the Kootenai River were working to capacity. The Trust and Columbia Power purchased it in 1996 for 130 million from the mining corporation Tech, formerly Kaminko. Kaminko sold their Winita project as well. The Kootenai River is a major river in southeastern BC and in northern Montana and Idaho in the United States. It is one of the uppermost major tributaries of the Columbia River the largest North American river that empties into the Pacific Ocean. The Kootenai runs 781 kilometers starting from its headwaters in the Kootenai Ranges of the Canadian Rockies. It flows through BC's East Kootenai region and into Northwestern Montana, then it turns west into northernmost Idaho Panhandle. Finally, it returns to BC in the West Kootenai region where it joins the Columbia River in Castlegar. You can see the dams and everything. Juanita, Arrow Lakes Generating Station, Brilliant Jam Generating Station. Moving water has been central to the Kootenai progress since the start of the electrical age. In particular, mining and smelting of Kootenai mineral resources have historically created a local demand for power. The Kootenai River drops 117 meters between the Kootenai Lake outflow at Nelson and its confluence at Castlegar. This rapid elevation drop combined with heavy seasonal water flows creates ideal conditions for production of hydropower. There are eight facilities on the Kootenai River that have a capacity of 1,085 megawatts, enough to power 500,000 homes. Upper Bonnington, Lower Bonnington, Corlin, Kootenai Generating Station, Nelson Hydropower Plant at Bonnington Falls, South Slocan Dam, Juanita Generating Station, Arrow Lakes Generating Station, and then Brilliant Dam Expansion, Upper Bonnington, owned by Fortis BC, this 65 megawatt facility built in 1907 by the West Kootenai Power and Light. It has six generators and two powerhouses. Lower Bonnington, owned by Fortis, this 54 megawatt facility was built in 1897 and was completely rebuilt in 1924. The Coralin Dam, owned by Fortis PC, this 51 megawatt facility was built in 1932. It had three 19,000 horsepower units that operate at about 16 meters below the surface from the water behind the dam. Kootenai Canal Generating Station, owned by Fortis, this 51 megawatt facility was built in 32. Nelson Hydropower Plant at Bonnington Falls, 
Owned by Nelson Hydro, City of Nelson Utility, this 60 megawatt facility was built in 1907 and has had many upgrades. It has four generators. South Slocan Dam, this 54 megawatt facility was built in the West Kootenai Power and Light in 1928. So lots going on here, guys. This region of the world was some of the first parts to have proper electric power, not coal like generators and stuff, actual hydroelectric power infrastructure. 1964, United States Canada signed Columbia River Treaty to provide flood control and optimize hydroelectric energy on both sides. Brilliant Dam Expansion Project. That's the second powerhouse. See how the spillway there is in line with that? So they're gonna they're harnessing the energy of the spillway to create secondary power. Basically, they got the generating station here and the generating station here. So that's really cool, guys. So that would be the Brilliant Dam Expansion. Makes everything possible, guys. I don't think people realize how much power is actually part of our lives. We're just at the Brilliant Dam Rest Area here, guys. So the Brilliant Rest Area. There's also a town called Brilliant, too. Nelson District. Dam's just down there. You see the markers? We got a turbine here. Original Francis Turbine Runner Unit 3. Brilliant Dam Generating Station in service from 1950 to 2002. Francis Turbine Runner. Running the turbine. We saw Francis turbines too. We've been seeing Def Kaplan turbines, Fran Francis turbines, various different types, right? Everybody's got their own, each guy's got his own idea. 1950 to 2002 though, this was in service. Brilliant dam. August 7th, 1941, the relocated railway sweeps past an early stage of excavation for the dam. The concrete retaining walls will support the future transformers and switchyard. April 14th, 1943, men working on the cofferdam and flooding diversion tunnels, which are incorporated into the first two spillways. November 12th, 1943, upstream and downstream cofferdam sections are being placed in the old river channel to divert water through the spillway tunnels. Fascinating, man. Fascinating watching this process. Work is accelerated on the last spillways while the river is being diverted through the spillway tunnels. This upstream view of the nearly completed dam in the Fortist archives. See the rail grade down there. I'm not going any further because it's a nice drop, but that's the rail grade. And then the Brilliant Dam, the last of the Kootenai River projects designed by the West Kootenai Power and Light Company, represents a transition point. It was engineered largely by the West Kootenai Power and Light staff, but constructed by Kaminko, who by now had controlled the pioneering electrical company. The smelter gets power from all of these places, or it used to. The project was driven by the requirements of the Allied war efforts, known as a trend here, and made possible by a priority rating which guaranteed the provision of materials such as steel, which were made scarce by the war. Also crucial to its timely development was the local presence of available skilled manpower, the Dukabors, who were exempted from military service. They represented 60% of the entire workforce. Early work commenced in 1940 and involved the relocation of over three kilometers of rail line, a segment of the provincial highway and improvements to the river channel below, the site of the future now. Major construction started in earnest in April, 1942. The river was constrained in temporary channels by wood crib coffer dams so that work could proceed in previously flooded locations. The dam was essentially completed in 1944 and the first generating unit producing power on June 15th of that year. Two and a half months later, the second unit was brought online. The third generator was added in 1950 and the fourth in 1968. Brilliant was purchased from Kameko in 1996 and the newly formed Columbia River Power Corporation and their joint venture partner, Columbia Basin Trust. The partners initiated work on several upgrades to increase the lifespan of the facility, make generation more efficient and boost the overall output from 120 megawatts to 145. Construction of a new plant on the left bank commenced in 2003. In order to utilize the water that was formerly spilled, the new plan employs a single Kaplan turbine to generate an additional 120 megawatts when the water supply is sufficient to run both plants. 
that's when they have the spillways. They use the spillways to power that expansion plant. We're just driving through the whole power complex now. So we're gonna continue on. We've got Bonnington coming up, upper and lower Bonnington as well as South Silcan Dam. And we've got uh, Coralin as well. We've done the Berlin, we're gonna do five. Five dams today. Uh, okay guys, so we're following the uh, Kootenai pow West Kootenai Power like generating complex area. So, oh, generating station, the uh, Kootenai Canal generating station, the South Slow Can Dam, and then Lower and Upper Bonnington are all in this area, guys. So, a lot, and it all generates power for the whole region. This is how everybody, Nelson, Slow Can, Caslo, Nacusp, like all these people get their power from here. This is where their power comes from, power generation complexes. Alrighty guys, so we're at Bonnington Falls here. Bonnington Falls generating station, you can see around me here. Power lines, Bonnington, series of dams all along the Kootenai River here. So, Nelson, Silvery Slow Can Heritage Tour. In 1886, the Hall brothers of Colville, Washington, discovered silver, copper, gold, and lead on Toad Mountain, just south of Nelson. Several claims were staked, including the famous Silver King Mine. The Kootenai Lake Landing used by the mines quickly developed into the town of Nelson. Growing from a mining camp into a supply and distribution center, Nelson offered hotels, stables, trade shops, and outfitters. Rail and water transportation links developed, connecting Nelson to the CPR line in Revelstoke and the Inland Empire at Spokane. The city was incorporated in 1897. Nelson's Cottonwood Falls, 1896, and then Bonington Falls, 1908, provided electricity for local mines, city streetlights, and the city's electric tramway system. The logging industry expanded along with government, education, and service sectors. Impressive buildings from the turn of the century continue to preserve a sense of a place that are a source of community pride. Nelson's gorgeous, guys. Nelson is absolutely gorgeous. It's a gorgeous place. Silver outcroppings on Kootenai Lake were noted in 1844 by the Hudson's Bay Company. However, prospecting did not begin until 1882. Rapid development of the mines and the towns that supported them quickly followed. And then we've got another grid sign here, the good old green signs, we love those. Good, the Sasquatch signs. Oh, Kaminko, eh? Huh. When hydroelectric power was first delivered from plant number one to Rossland's Mines in 1898, the 32-mile transmission lines were the longest on the continent, utilizing the 360-foot drop from Kootenai Lake to the Columbia River. Additional construction of dams and generating plants made possible the growth of Kaminko operations at Trail and Kimberly. They needed power to run the compressors in Kimberly and all the mining equipment, so that was what they did there. And the trail smelter would not be what it is if it didn't have all this infrastructure supporting infrastructure. Bonington Falls Generating Station. Alexander Carey, in recognition of his exceptional architectural career and in appreciation of his outstanding dedication to the Nelson community. Carey, born in Yorkville, Ontario, on November 14th, 1863. As a young man, Carey made his way westward to Winnipeg to study construction and architecture, arriving in what was to become Nelson, BC, on April 17th, 1895. A talented, prolific architect. Carey's career spanned over 52 years in Nelson and the Kootenays. He designed and completed hundreds of structures, both commercial and residential in the region. He was an innovative architect. The first in North America to design a fire escape with enclosed fireproof walls. The majority of Nelson's heritage structures in the downtown core area are Carey's design. As well, Carey was involved in the construction of the Nelson hydropower plant at Bonington Falls, which began in 1905. He died on July 29th, 1947, bringing to a close one of the most prolific architectural careers the area has ever witnessed. To satisfy a growing community's appetite for electricity and unable to rely on a stable water supply at its Cottonwood Creek hydroelectric facility, the city of Nelson commenced construction of Bonnington Falls Generating Station in 1905 and installed a single 750 kilowatt vertical water wheel generator. As the city and the surrounding area continued to grow, the old powerhouse was expanded and three more water wheel generators were added between 1908 and 1948 to bring the total output of the facility to 9,000 kilowatts. In 1995, a fifth high efficiency generator and new powerhouse was constructed just downstream of the original facility and brought online to increase the available output of the station to 16,000 kilowatts. Today, Bonnington Falls Generating Station produces approximately 50% of Nelson Hydro's annual energy requirement, which is enough to serve 7,500 homes. 
Bonington Falls Generating Station is owned by the Corporation of the City of Nelson and is operated by Nelson Hydro, a city of Nelson municipality utility serving electricity consumers in the city and surrounding area, including Queens, Balfour, Harrop, Proctor, West Arm of the Kootenai Lake, Tegum, and Blewett. Alrighty guys, so we're coming to the end of this one. A brilliant dam, Bonington Falls, really critical pieces of infrastructure in the power generation for British Columbia, as well as flood control and, you know, a whole bunch of other things, Columbia Basin Trust during the war, for the smelter, all kinds of good stuff. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell icon to get notified. And Sasquatch Prospector out.